you know, all in, full sync. The crazier, the better. The further out there, the better. Because that's the thing. Like, if you think of like the wildest story you personally have ever encountered, how many people would believe it? You know? I know. Yeah. Mr. Record. Hey. What's up, fellas? The manager of this here. We've just literally been watching you like two hours before the show. Yeah. We, fa- we yeah. found this literally two hours before the show. This show was going to air two weeks ago. And we like back. When yep. we we saw the guys there with the with the the guns talking about all this, we've spoken about this months ago. And are you boys going out there? Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. When this story first broke, um, Tim and I had had talked maybe thirty minutes about it. And then we just decided, like, man, we need to get online. We just need to talk about it. Well, I don't like scripting anything, and neither does he. And so we just got on, got online, had a genuine conversation about it. And, um, you know, about, I don't know, about a, a week or so later, more events happen. And so we have a, uh, a better breakdown, I guess you could say. Of a, of a show and within one week of that it goes up to 900,000 views almost a million views of one week wow. and I'm, I'm thinking like shit we broke the internet god what did we do and so it's interesting how much attention it garnered um not so much from the government but from the people because we never get a square answer from the government hell i worked for the government for 15 years you'll never get a straight answer out of us and so you know, I, uh, I'm actually part of an archaeological team uh, called the Paleo Research Group. We do a lot of uh, stuff here in North America, more especially within the Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas region. And we look for the remnants of the mound builders. That's the mm-hmm. tribe of people that interacted most likely with the giants that were here in North America. And we found crazy stuff thus far. We were trying to get access to a, an elongated skull that's in a it's an estate museum that we have access to go and see it, but not access to go and film it. But our, our team went in there and saw it also to include a mummy, which none of those things are supposed to exist here in America. So I do a, a, a lot of little things like this. And um, Tim said, Hey man, we got to go to Peru. This is getting crazy. We had some dude with his face peeled off. I think you guys have seen that video. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. That's the, the, video, the video, video that we can't play on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Well, YouTube. you know, if you go to Alberino's, um, if you go to his channel, it's on mine and it's on his. Um, we talked to Clayton Morris from Redacted, and yep. uh, Tim Tim was going to go on Redacted, and they wanted to show that. And when Redacted had put it in kind of like a dummy page to see if it would pass the YouTube censors it immediately flagged it. And so we're like, well, damn, I've already made this entire long ass video. So then we had to learn how to do editing in YouTube, which sucks by the way. And so my version is edited, it's blurred. And I said, Tim, let me run it. If I get flagged, I've been, I think I've had like seven or eight strikes in YouTube. So uh, (laughs) I'm like, you know, just if, if something happens, I'll be gone for two weeks again, but you know, at least we'll know. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we need to edit out your your stuff because Tim's stuff's way way higher up in the ranks than mine, so we don't want him getting flagged. Mine went through, no problems, and then uh, Tim said, "Screw it, man! I'm gonna I'm gonna be brave and I'm gonna put the whole thing out there." So if you go to Timothy Alberino, um, his channel on YouTube, you'll see the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And we, people we, we debated us. Yeah, people debated us. Is it fake? Um, is it just some dude with, you know, makeup on? Like, I'm not there. I can't tell you yes or no, but I've had 15 years worth of seeing people either blown up, shot, dead, stabbed, crushed in car wrecks. Looks kind of real to me. I, yeah, if I could go there good. and, you know, yeah, if I could go there and stick my fingers on them, you know, I would, but, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of problems there. There's no flesh on the skull. There's no, um, other lacerations. Now. I don't know if I got the picture on me right now, but I do know what these mutilations look like because on my little bitty farm that I live on, we actually have had ourselves a cattle mutilation. 
which is interesting to be the one guy within BFE, Texas that I live in to be the only guy in the government and to have a cattle mutilation in my backyard um, to one of our Angus steers. That's kind of unique. So I, I have this uh, familiarity with it. And really, that's what kicked this all off for me. Um, but anyways, back to back to this whole thing with Peru. There's been multiple stories of people having attempted abductions. Um, we thought it might have been human trafficking. Forgive me if I start talking like a cop for a second. But we had a, attempted abductions, um, human on some sort of entity interaction. There is interactions with cartel. There is interactions with these illegal miners. That, um, they're actually, when they say miners, they're loggers. They're illegal loggers. That makes way um, more sense. <laughs> yeah, the whole mining thing, I don't know where that came from. But um, we are in communication with the, uh, when I say we, I mean specifically Tim, because I don't speak the lingo at all. Um, we're in communication with the Apu, who's the chief. Um, the chief is actually going to meet us at the port uh, whenever we fly in and uh, to Equintos, and they're going to accompany us all the way up the river. Now, going up the river is an 18-hour float. So that's going to be a long time on a boat, um, wow. but that's going to be our base of operations. And so uh, we're, we're, we'll have armed security with us. Um, I was kind of a, a thing for me and Tim. We got to make sure we got armed security and this isn't our first time in Peru together. So we, we know, you know, how these things work, uh, in these countries, um, in this area is such an impoverished area. You have, um, riverboat pirating. You get the cartels that you have to deal with occasionally. Um, typically even here in America, the cartels stay out of the common man's way because they don't they want they don't want to make waves they don't want to have any problems they just want to make their money and live and so most likely we're not going to be bothered by that it's the common thief that we'll have a problem with now i'm i'm not the smallest guy in the world but i'm six and a half foot tall and 310 pounds so they can bring it if they want <laughs> um not to mention i'll have armed security we, we got these peruvian navy guys that are jungle commandos so if i don't feel like doing anything i'll sick those guys on you um but we're pretty serious about it um it's turned into a humanitarian mission what's interesting guys and i haven't heard of this and i've done these these types of investigations for a while looking into this stuff i have yet come across anything where one the people were so afraid because of what was going on that they almost refused to leave the village because of fear of other interactions or incursions mm -hmm. um, to the people. The, the something is strained with the, uh, the girls being accosted by these creatures, entities, aliens. Mm -hmm. We almost think now at this rate, looking at some of the photography that we have, and um, eyewitness drawings from other incidents that we may actually be dealing with in Sectolin. That's the tall grays that are the very violent grays that people like Tim, who's that's Tim's world. He's the expert in that. I just used to shoot at people for a living. Um, but being schooled up on this, that was the ones that control the small grays and that typically run the experiments. They're the bad guys. So, I don't know why they're there and you know you would think of a, an advanced species that could come from wherever they came from either underneath the earth or from interdimensional or another galaxy whatever man um why is it like running through the woods trying to snatch 16 year old girls the one the one girl that uh was first attacked she had lacerations across her yep. throat pretty bad that. laceration she was the same girl that hold held the picture up which yes. I'm not convinced that when I look at that picture that that is a Photoshop job on her phone or somebody's told her to hold that image up because we all know what that image was from. That image was from, I think, a Grand Prix where they had that minor, mm -hmm. not minor, sorry, they had the, <laughs> the guy with the commercial jetpack racing across that she held up, which to me is just... It, it it's like one of those media stunts that you just see that you just know that they've either been forced in they've even been said like listen here's some money hold the hold this picture up or somebody said somebody i don't think it's a photoshop job i think somebody's just said here blah 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 here's the money 
help well, maybe, this picture up. Or maybe it was the best comparison that they could find to um, show what she was describing. That's maybe how they tricked her into holding hell in into doing that. Mm. Well, what, so with, you guys are with, in contact with them down there. What are they saying? That's not what they're saying at all. I mean, yeah. these these are these aren't ignorant, you know, fourth world people. They have cell phones. They know stuff. They mm -hmm. got the internet. It's not the greatest internet. Um, you know, they don't have Starlink in the Amazon jungle, but um, they know what they saw. We're going to have comparative evidence. Um, Tim had me get a, a bunch of series of photographs that we're going to be showing these guys. And then also um, some video evidence of actual military guys um, that are using the latest and greatest jet packs. Mm -hmm. They're only about $35,000 a unit for the base unit, by the way. So I'm sure Holy. some cartel in the Amazon, <laughs> you know, has one. Um, trees are valuable you know, these days, man. Yeah. Look, the, the thing that you don't want to do is fly around above the Amazon rainforest because where are you going to land? And if you have an emergency, what, which tree are you going to get impaled on first? Mm -hmm. So it, the story doesn't make sense. And we've heard, man, we've heard so many different things. There was um, one story of the, the being seven to eight foot tall gray wearing some gray metallic like suit. And he had these red glowing discs on the bottom of his feet and they pulsated or something. And that would make him rise mm -hmm. meters off the ground and just fly. Um, never seen that. Never heard about that in any other UFO investigation or interaction. So that's a new one. And the thing that's interesting about this is there's a lot of new ones that we're checking, right? There's a mm -hmm. lot of new incidents that are not usual. Um, the, the most special part of this is that um and and tim is the expert on right now he's he's the subject matter expert on abductions he actually was briefing four or five of our congressmen about abductions and so that's how serious this guy is no longer you know saturday night sci-fi channel this is in congress now and in, in the mm -hmm. the capitol building they're talking about this and so the interesting thing here is that Typically, you don't run away from them. You don't escape them. That's not common. And so we have at least two or three different cases. Uh, if two or three different cases of attempted abductions that did not work. And then there's multiple incidents where the men were chasing this being or beings through the through the jungle. Um, I think most of the time the incident happened during the hours of darkness and then uh, they fired upon it. And when they fired upon it, one of the incidents says that the bullets bounced off of the plating that it was wearing and the being fell down and then stood right back up and then poof vanished. Um, another one of them is that they were shooting at them and the bullets were going right through them. It may be the same incident from a different point of view, and that may be why we, we got that different testimony. The other one is that um, they were shooting at them, and this is actually very reminiscent to something that happened, I believe, in 1991 or 1993, um, and it, it actually happened with uh, not Spetsnaz, God, KGB. It happened with the KGB in Ukraine. They fired at them, and then the being emitted some sort of a light, some sort of a white light that came from the center of the being, and it hit this man. There's two men that have been hit with this and one female. Um, both men described being blinded, um, petrified, knocked to the ground, intense pain. And then the female, and this was just a week ago, uh, another 15, 16-year-old girl, she may still be in a state of paralysis but she was in complete paralysis hit knocked down immovable cannot move at all no damage at all i mean it sounds very like the tall grays and then the the lights very phil schneiderish very dulce wars uh reminiscent of that i mean no no actual damage just um no like knocking out. yeah it's um i don't know how to describe it um before my first deployment to Iraq, I remember DARPA was in Camp Wilson at a, a training ground that we had called Mojave Viper, pre-deployment training. And they were testing some sort of a microwave um, emitting 
weapon and they had all this dumb boots us dumb private first class and privates walk in front of this thing and you got hit with microwaves and i mean it was immediately you felt like your skin was boiling um intense headache you want to throw up some guys crap themselves i i walked through it and immediately noped right out i felt like my hands were immediately on fire immediately so it, it boils the the hydrogen boils the water inside mm -hmm. of you right um i don't know of anything else that we have now once again we're talking about darpa and stuff that no one else knows either um they're not just making robots flip and do you know parkour they're they're creating crazy stuff but i don't think we have that i don't think we have what these people have reminiscent 1991 1993-ish um, I actually have an old CIA document. It's kind of the thing I do. I collect old CIA documents and I read them. Apparently, some people like to listen to it. Um, there was, you guys are going to love this. There was a group of Ivans. That's what we call them in the military. A bunch of Russian soldiers. So a group of Ivans um, in Siberia. And they're patrolling on some sort of a training mission or whatever. Some training op. And they have all their weapons with them. And uh, over the horizon of the mountain pass, in flies a saucer. And so this, you know, platoon of Ivans thought that it would be a great idea to shoot an RPG at it. And they hit the damn thing. And it actually went down. Um, the soldiers went out and they were investigating what was happening. I don't know if they had radio communications or anything else. The KGB report's really kind of short. Um, and... So supposedly from here, uh, five little gray beings came out of this saucer and the soldiers approached it. I could only imagine with their guns probably pointed at it and they emitted a light that hit these soldiers. And I think two out of 23 guys uh, were the only ones not described to be petrified. Like petrified stone that's in a kgb report that's a declassified cia report from i believe 1993 and um it was it was enough to be added to a tip and what a tip was going over collecting this data is all that's all these these little scenarios and events are mm -hmm. really they're data points that we follow so a tip followed this for a long time and just kind of collected as much stuff as possible. And there's no telling how many of these little events are out. There. There's no telling how much stuff has been going on in Peru. Brazil has been inundated with this type of stuff for a long time um, to the point where it's kind of weird in Brazil and in certain parts of South America, the UFOs hunt people, hurt people, kill people here in America. It's like a, hunt people hurt people abduct people bring them back and then you know a year later by the way this is your humanoid mm -hmm. alien child um so there's something very interesting that is happening here and you know this is not i i want to say it's not skinwalker ranch type of stuff uh Rick, we do think you, do like you think a, this has anything to do with i mean i don't, I don't know if you've uh, I believe you you probably will have seen it with the uh, Stephen Greer that's had the the whistleblower stand up and talk about the the craft that he witnessed uh and he was like basically all his team were just fucked up and they just had to put their arms down and then later on he was on the Sean Ryan show and he said that he believed that he got told sorry that what was in those containers was uh, people people being trafficked. Yeah, um, there's validity to that. I believe that Marine, that was 2009. I mm -hmm. think he was from 2.5 or 2.7 or 2.9, second Marines. I was in 3rd Battalion, 3rd Marines. So when he was over there um, doing a humanitarian mission, I was in Ramadi, Iraq. And so... To me, that gave a lot of strong, um, how would I say this? Not, I guess, validity to his story. Um, now you got you got Marines that are liars, and you got Marines that are shitheads. But you know, for an infantry guy to put his his face out there on the line, 
and uh, to be, you know, harangued uh, for, for lying. I mean, that's, that's a big deal in where we come from. And so, you know, and the guy looked, the guy looked nervous. I've interviewed God. I don't know how many people, um, but you know, when someone's nervous and tell them the truth about it. And he looked like, man, he's, he didn't want to say everything he was saying, um, but had to get it out. And I, I, I commend him for it. I, I, I like the fact that he went on Sean Ryan's show. It's good to see that um, mm-hmm. another brother in combat, the Navy SEAL Sean Ryan, be able to get these guys more exposure. Because for the longest time, guys in our field, we see stuff like this probably more in frequency than some other people do and don't talk about it. Because for one thing, you're not allowed to talk about it. Two, if you do talk about it, now you're that guy. And that guy sits alone in the chow hall and everyone says, beware of that guy. So you don't want that stigmatism. I've known plenty of cops who sit there and say, man, I saw a UFO the other night. And you know what everyone says? All right. There's that guy again. Lay off the whiskey. (laughs) Um, You you don't know what you don't know. Um, But I think human trafficking is obviously something. Tim and I rolled around we rolled around a very interesting topic. Um, I, I don't even know if we ever brought it up on the show. Um, me and Tim's done several shows together about this. The possibility of having back engineered craft. Highly likely. The government even says it, right? The possibility for highly likely back engineered craft that are using some sort of technology to abduct people plausible using that to then human traffic people. Okay. Now we're, now we're on to something Mm -hmm. because when these things start to connect, you start to get a very diabolical scheme. Are we really talking about aliens now or what are we talking about? Because if this craft can move in, in, in G forces that would kill the average pilot mm-hmm. and you can carry cargo. What can't you do? Can you bring it to the moon? If it can survive the vacuum of space, if it can plunge into water and not disintegrate, what can't it do? And what are you doing with the people? That's a good question, but it's not getting answered. It's not getting pushed. It's definitely an economic question, too, because you think if you have that technology to push it, right, you get to do for a benefit, for a value. There's a value. If these, for whatever people who are people or things or whatever, are trafficking in people for unknown destinations, what, why? What is that profit margin? What, and what so, I mean by profit margin isn't so much money, but like, what dark thing do you need this for? Like, what payment is being made here? You know, so for a long time, there's been rumors, conspiracies, books. Um, a lot of guys that I know that are in this industry wholeheartedly believe that there is a base on Mars, wholeheartedly believe like you cannot not tell them it's not true. Um, I can't remember the author's name, he's he's uh, now passed on, but he wrote a book about the pyramids in cities that are on Mars. I think it's called Cydonia. And so the theory is, and this is a working theory that, that Tim and I were, were juxtaposing is that let's say there is a working base on Mars. Well, who's going to mine everything. Mm Do you think Elon Musk is going to do it? No, we can barely have, you can barely say anything and Siri is going to try and order something off of Amazon right now. The, the technology is not there to have robots digging by themselves and processing. You need people, you need labor because it's cheap. It's been one of the cheapest forms of economy ever since the beginning of man. And it will continue to be that way until Christ returns. So I would never say that the people who rule this world and run this world are not below faking alien invasions, faking alien encounters, abducting people, organ harvesting, child sex trade, or human trafficking for human enslavement. 
you can bring them wherever and anywhere you want. And if we're talking about that black op part of the budget that, you know, accidentally gets lost every 10 years and in the, the Pentagon, they're just going to tell you, prove it, prove it, prove it. And then you're going to have someone like me come and visit you. Then you're not going to prove it anymore. And that that's provable history. I have, I don't know how many accounts of people that I probably worked with at one point in time that would go and talk to people. You know how many times I've investigated people because they said, Hey, I'm going to blow up the white house. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you know what? One of the interesting things that people always say is how the hell did you know I said that? Cause it's on the internet. Anything you say on the internet, anything in social media has a little marker and it's going to get fed to the NSA and then some asshole like me that's in the middle of BFE, Texas, is going to get an email. <laughs> By the way, go check out this guy. He says he's going to blow up the White House because he doesn't like, you name it, Bush, uh, Obama, Biden, Trump. I worked for all four of them. And so then we'll go out there and we'll read our statement. Did you on this day at this time say this uh, stupid thing? Yes or no? Yeah. All right. Did you mean it? No. Okay. Sign right here that you're not going to do that shit again. Don't do that. And then we leave, right? Typically, that's how that works. So if we can do that, what do you think the other technology is used for? Now, I mean, like when we talk about spying, it's beyond what anyone can even conceive the possibility of spying. And I don't know what's in these craft, and I don't know what their capability is, but I know that when uh, a very innocent balloon or series of balloons floated across our country a few months ago that it scanned six stories, seven stories deep and was able to ping any iPhone or any Samsung that had its wireless capabilities of Bluetooth on, which immediately mapped out anything and everything that it was there with. So if it was a nuclear silo and you got a guy on every floor and in every corner, we know what it looks like. If China can do that, what do you think everyone else can do? I mean, like at, at some point, I think this is a big cabal. I think you have governments that are playing war with each other, and then you have something closer, something more intimate, something tighter that is doing something much more nefarious. And while we're so busy with Israel, or we're so busy with the American border, I worked on the American border, the, the Texas border. Um, it sucks. It's terrible. Um but while we're so busy doing all these things and hating each other for our religions and our economic belief and political belief, there are people kidnapping people disguised as something that, hey, you know how we'll make the kids never believe it? We'll make video games about it. We'll make Men in Black and then we'll make you know all these other movies about it and you'll just laugh it away. And that's all part of, that's part of Project Markingbird. That's the CIA. Their whole hand in all these things. They controlled the media from the very beginning, from the 50s till now. And even then, in the church committee, I think, what was that, 74, 75? When it came out in Congress, and they were talking to, I believe, the head of the CIA, the, CIA, the director at that time. He said, um, how many of your agents are in every single broadcast room? So that's classified. We'll have to go behind doors. Because it was every broadcast Every paper, every magazine had an attache to include Hollywood, to include music. Mm -hmm. So with the things like what you guys are doing right now, you don't understand. But this is as free and clear of information that people can get. So the more you guys come out and the more you talk about it, the more you bring up this stuff, the more it gets exposed, the better prepared people can become. And so I commend you guys for, you know, talking about this stuff. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, what Tim and I are fixing to go do in Peru, we could, we could get killed for, not just by malaria. There are a lot of people who don't want us to go and find whatever we may find or not find anything. So I saw that you said you got an email. Oh, yeah. Would you care be to the first one. that on that? You know, as much as you want to. No, yeah. Um, 
ever since I started doing podcasting, when I got out of DHS in 2021, 2021, I think, um, it was right after January 6 happened and I, I decided I hate the government. I'm getting out. Um, I had started down this, this journey and path of doing podcasting and, um, a little bit of ministry work and stuff. And I would talk about CIA stuff, DOD mm -hmm. stuff, um, paranormal stuff because I always found it to be interesting. And then, uh, when Tim and I started to really talk about the UFO stuff and then started to talk about the stuff going on in Peru, got an email from a dude who said he was in the Pentagon. He's then since emailed me multiple times trying to prove to me who he is and try to steer me to talk more about politics and, and, um, it's interesting because I got like 5,000 subscribers. Who am I? Mm -hmm. I'm a little bitty guppy in this big old ocean. Um, but when I think when you get people of certain backgrounds like mine and like Tim's and we team up, maybe there's a, there's a hesitation from them there that we may actually take this seriously. This is going to be ancient aliens on history channel. You know, we're not going to be tourists in another country and say, hey, right over there, history marker, that's where a, a UFO landed. I know we're actually going to be doing a, an actual investigation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to apply every bit of my skills to help Tim. Um, Tim's the the show pony, so I'm going to be filming. I got all the equipment. I got, we got flares. We got uh, some thermals. We got some night vision. I got a Sonics Aurora's with colored night that's vision. What, cool. That's what I figured you were stuff. taking yeah yeah um uh, i'll probably try and, and pick up a laser pointer while i'm there like a little cheap one mm -hmm. the the goal is to not be the guy with the shaky grainy cell phone footage you know um <laughs> you don't want to be that guy and so you can't zoom in with a cell phone to see it well but mm -hmm. you should see what i can see through this psionics aurora pro at night because mm -hmm. I live pretty close to Lockheed Martin, and we see their their craft floating around us all the time. Man, I can see some stuff with this camera. So it'll be cool. What's going on? Uh, yeah, it's um, like I said. We, we hope to we hope to get as much physical evidence and witness testimonies as possible, and then from there, we're you know Tim will throw it all together and put out his report. Um, I'm just there to assist them to the best of my ability keep him safe, keep us safe. And uh, yeah, it's just another deployment for me. So it's going to be fun. I take it you... Tim's going to be like um, translating this back to the camera, what the interviews that he's having with these people. Like, yeah. Like literally live. Is, is he going to do, be doing it live as it happens? Or is that going to be an edit afterwards? Uh, I don't think we really decided that. I mean, we're we're this is going to be down and dirty. This isn't a movie that we're making. It, it's just no, a, yeah. It's just an investigatory document, and so um, I'll have to know what is being said, so that I can also help press with questions and, and keep make sure that we're keeping the questions on the correct path. But mm -hmm. we don't want to give um, uh, guiding questions that we know we're going to get a correct answer in. Um, so that's that's part of one way we're we're going to be doing this and you know tim he he's the he's the leader of this mission so whatever i can do to assist him uh this is his baby and so i don't speak the lingo i i know abla anything that these guys are saying i tried using my my survival spanish last time we were in uh ojante tambo and uh god we were in um cusco and a bunch of other places Machu Picchu and um yeah they don't speak they don't speak Spanish it's like an Incan language mm -hmm. um so yeah I I'm gonna be completely blindsided with what everybody says hopefully we'll have an interpreter um because while Tim is also doing a lot of this stuff I'm gonna be working with this village um and trying to understand what their patrol paths are trying to help them be more established in their patrolling uh, because they the the men are having to don rifles and go on patrol every night. They can't go out to their farms. They can't go fishing. That's why we have to bring food and medicine to them because they're so terrified of 
what could happen at any moment in time of, of people coming in there or these entities coming in there, whatever it is that we find out that they are, um, they're being host, uh, the hostility and, the, and being accosted has them on such guard that they can't even go to their normal jobs to sustain um, the village. They have to be there with, with their rifles and pistols and, you know, it's, uh, I've been all around the world. I've seen a lot of things. I've never seen I, anything like this or heard of anything like this. So this, I just, I, I would like to say well done, man, because the last time we spoke about this, I put, I called out to the South American um, channels out there that do what I do to go out there, to see it for themselves, to investigate, because we, we do have something going on, regardless of what it is, there is something going on and not one of them has got off their ass and done something. So Hats off for Nobody, you. yeah, exactly right, right on here. No, not what any any UFO channel that's saying that this is a load of rubbish and there's nothing happening there. Well, go fucking see for yourself because well, uh, that's what these guys are doing. Because well, to to yeah. me and my wife from Ecuador, she speaks she speaks fluent Spanish. It's I mean it's, it's Peru's a little bit out from Ecuador, but it's still a, a similar kind of uh, accent to 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 her native tongue now she 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 said the first thing she said to me when 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 this all hit and i was like what the fuck is this and she's like they're not acting that's where where they are genuinely genuinely fucking scared and i mean i mean we're as as channels we're missing a great opportunity to investigate something that's going on in our time instead of talking about Roswell and all this other stuff that's happened years. We got something going on now, and there's there's people there. There's Jaime, who's made who's made a good living from covering this phenomena, and he won't get up. He won't send people down or nothing. So, man, you got my support. Well, record if- guys. Let's yeah, I mean uh, yeah, I, I echo that. It's, um oh no, I was gonna say I echo that too. It's awesome you guys are going, but um, and you might not want to get into too much detail if you've thought about this before, but if you guys are to get some really, really incredible footage, is there a distribution plan in place rather than just one YouTube channel, some way to kind of where where are you gonna take this stuff, you know, before it can get possibly shut down, you know? We have contingencies. Well, brother. My my channel will support you, so you, you get anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, looking, I'd post I'm, some stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not looking. I'm not looking to like make yeah. a buck off of it, but yeah. I will. I will show it, and I will show a little bit. Well, just to we get them to go over to you to watch what you guys are doing. Well, <laughs> it, it it'll be all uh, put onto Alberino's YouTube channel. So for anyone who's listening, for one thing, thank you so much for listening. Uh, make sure that you're sc- subscribed alien addict and uh you know check out what tim's doing over there on um, the timothy alberino um he, he's got a website he's does most of the stuff on twitter so if you want to follow us live while we're there twitter is probably the best place because mm-hmm. we'll be giving an update every day we have to have a satellite phone because there's just there's shit signal out there so we'll never get it um you got the twitter link in the description box I just I'm go put everything uh, in this uh, description. We will Timothy yeah. Alberino yeah. um, at, so, at Twitter. So, so guys in the chat, it's in the description box for me, for you, for the whole world to let's see this as it's happening. I, I'm I'm interested. I'm yeah. interested. Right but the yeah. one th- the one thing I wanted to ask you now, you said about the the face being missing from the person. Yeah, is that the footage where they're pulling a the body out of the river? Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, I shared I shared this information with Ollie, and I'll share it with you. That was posted on Reddit before all this happened, and it mm-hmm. was actually stated that that was found in Brazil. The body was being pulled out of Brazil. I did send I did send Ollie the link to prove what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, um, and we were never really solid on where that came from. Um, we, we still, even after we had discussed it, we weren't solid on whether or not it was real, but it was the pedicalis, the, the face peelers, Mm -hmm. um, that everyone was talking about. And we're like, you know, here we are, we're discussing, uh, Tim and I, this before we ever even made the YouTube, uh, podcast over it. 
we were going to discuss what was happening in this village. And then lo and behold, on separate Reddit channels, we come across this. And I think some things people do just to garner attention and they'll repost stuff. It's you know, just to, yeah. So yeah, we they never it, said they we, did we never the said this thing. was what it was. They did it, they did it the same with Vegas thing. They were pulling up ring cam ring ring cam pictures of some alien and stuff. They you know it it peppers it peppers and it mires something that possibly is genuine by putting out these and channels do it for money. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm yeah, sorry. Absolutely. I don't like do that. it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, there's there's nothing that Tim and I are doing in, in Peru right now that's fixing to make us money. We're going there for the evidence. Um, well, you know, like I said, we're, we're not we're not making a movie to sell. I mean, this is all going to be free. It's going to be on YouTube. Um, I'll put it on my Rumble channel uh, and on my YouTube channel. Um, I I I like to preach about the Word of Christ, and YouTube doesn't like that. And I don't care what YouTube says or thinks or wants, so I continue to say what I say. And so um, I'm I'm just one more strike away from being finally completely banned on YouTube. Oh, so if I'm not here, I'll be on Rumble. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean that's that's us in a nutshell. Um, you know, the rest of this will when we come back. Um, Tim will be doing all the editing and stuff. He's got a, an important trip to. Go to Guatemala, look at some pyramids and ziggurats down there. It's cool. All over, all over North America, Central America, and South America, we have these phenomenons and we have these paranormal encounters and some that are still going on right now. And so, you know, we fund ourselves so we can't exactly just be hop and skip all around the world. When are you planning to go to Peru, this, this village? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> wow <laughs> tomorrow evening we leave oh, yeah all the more happy that we got you now yeah. <laughs> before you die yeah. you know no, he's gonna be oh, jesus be ollie yeah i i i don't like planes i don't like planes at all uh when i was in the government i flew with Big a tough gun. guy like you come on now <laughs> nah hey you know what when i was in the government i flew with a gun on the plane and i felt i felt okay until yeah. you don't know who's sitting beside you and I, I don't want to get too into the weeds of this, but I, I know another guy, he was in another agency, sat next to a person with Ebola. Never oh, knew it. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when Man. that whole Ebola scare was going yeah. on, like 2016. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. He was the air marshal sitting right next to him. Yeah, I, so I've, I've he, known of air marshals that were going through worried the about the nasty the bugs on the plane. Everything. Yeah. I worry about those, too. Hey guys, we're about to have a, a severe thunderstorm over here, and I'm starting to lose a lot of signals. So yeah, you I'm are. Going to sign just off. Quick, just 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 really quickly before you go, you did mention the blue beam thing. Have you and have you and Tim kind of discussed that the possibilities with you going out there that this could possibly you say it again? be? Have you and Tim discussed the possibilities that you two going out there that this could possibly be like one of the testing grounds for project Bluebeam, and this poor village could be a test guys i apologize i, I think my going in and out no nope. worries left. no worries man thanks for coming on dude uh thank you for your time love yeah. to have you again i appreciate you being in contact you return, with you come back on on your return Safe trip, my friend. Yeah, yeah, safe, safe travels. God right. be with you, brother. See you guys. Hey, I'll send you an email when we get back. Perfect. Thank you.